videographed by Craig. So, we have a, a mishmash of streets on today's agenda. Uh, these are streets where, uh, in one case, we didn't have a, 
a sufficient quorum to vote on the street. In other cases, we have never received a petition, although in, we, we may have looked at it early in the process before we were following the letter of uh, the process. Um, and I know all of you have put some thought into it and have various matrices about how you'd like to approach it. I think rather than try to collate all of our various matrix, matrices, we can go through this fairly quickly, just point by point. So if that's all right, I'd like to uh, get a motion to take Tyler Court out of order. So moved. Since we've already sort of gotten into that. Um, all right, so we all know where it is. So, Gary, go ahead. If, if you wouldn't mind, I, I, since I sort of gave a lot of thought to the original criteria that we used, and mm -hmm. now um, I've come to reconsider that criteria, I, I wanted to at least let the other board members know where I stand on this whole issue right now. And so I think, I'm assuming like many of us, once we looked at all these situations in the field, we realized that um, following the guidelines that I set forth at the beginning um, would have resulted in a, some pretty onerous situations for the abutters as far as making arrangements for plowing. And so that got me, certainly got me to reconsider what we were doing and what we really were trying to accomplish here. Um, and I, I have to say my previous attempt to do that was to strike a balance between um, private ways that receive city services and private ways that currently do not receive city services. And I was, so that was my focus. And I think that was one way to go. It probably wasn't the best way to go. Um, so I've, I've kind of refocused on this. And um, it, it seems to me that rather than try to alter those criteria to make everything fit, I don't think we can do that. I think the situations are just too unique to use a set of criteria like that. So I've looked at this more along the lines of which one, which of these private ways uh, just don't meet some intuitive uh, standard to become a public way. And I, in most cases, boiled down my general guidelines to if a, if a private way serves a property owned by a, a single entity, I, I don't think in most cases that should become a public way. And that's similar to the condominium projects. And, um, so I think that's a guideline I, I feel comfortable using. And then uh, private ways where the co-mingling of the traveled way and the parking makes it too difficult to figure out which is the traveled way and which is the parking at least sets the stage for um, me concluding that ought to be continue to be a private way. Um, and then as I looked at these, narrowness clearly was an issue, as, as some people have already mentioned. Um, we've had some discussions in the field during our, our visits about um, perhaps making the taking, if a, if a way is to become public, making the taking wider than the pavement to meet some minimum width with no, no commitment to change the width of the pavement today, but it, at least try to um, reach some reasonable standard for a minimum width. And what I was thinking of was 20 feet. I don't know that we can reach that in every case, um, but I was thinking about that as a way to to try to deal with some of these very narrow streets. And then the last point that I recognize and is, is that we, by doing this, we may be opening the door for private ways that currently do not receive city services to come to us and say, hey, we're just like one you've approved. And um, I think in the interest of fairness, we need to consider those. And, um, it may or may not happen. I don't know. So anyway, that's, that's sort of how my thinking changed on this as we went through the whole process. Right. Well, I, I want to support almost everything that you said. I, the matrix that I worked out comes really close to something like yours. I had one additional one, which is where residents did not want to become mm -hmm. public. So that would be a, an additional That's category. 
So turning specifically to Tyler Court, uh, <clears throat> I just want to thank, well, I want to start by thanking Mike for all the work that he did both initially and, and, and coming back with this now. I think as I was listening to you on the on the width issue, maybe the, the way to get around the 20 feet minimum, minimum is to think really seriously about how, as a practical matter, the street's being used. Um, there are some streets that will never be anywhere close to 20 feet, but they're never going to also almost never going to see two-way traffic. Um, and that may be the way uh, to, to get around that, that, that 20 is a guideline, not a rule. And that, uh, I think we all have a pretty good idea of the kind of you know, vehicle traffic that most of, the, most of the marginal ones get. And in most cases, it's, 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 it's not heavy. It's not heavy. They they tend to be dead ends, um, uh, but uh, so that may be just something to consider. I hate to be too rough on the original criteria. I think they served us well for dozens of streets. They just were into the and they gave us the a murky middle stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, any specific thoughts about Tyler Court? Uh, we've been raise the issue of maybe cleaning the fence to at least make it visually uh, a wider... And functionally mm -hmm. wider, because this, this, all this scrub is blocking... Yeah. Well, it, it scrapes the cars. You, I, I have actually tried to go to... It, 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 someone's scraping along the most bushes to get one past another. Any questions about it? Uh, I guess I could make one comment. Yes. I, what, uh, kept, I kept thinking about is um, one of the things you said, and I think every public hearing is that we're trying to figure out ways to get to yes. So, so in that vein, would you like to make a motion that we accept, or that we recommend that the city council accept Tyler Court? I, I could make such a motion. And I'm second that. Any further discussion? Staff have any input? So all in favor of recommending that the City Council accept Tyler Court and declare it to be a city street? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? I didn't see it, so that's what I didn't see, so I'm abstaining. So one abstention. Okay. I have a picture. <laughs> Thank you all very much. You're Thank very you. welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. You. And you'll, you'll talk to Smith and... Okay. Great. Yeah. So l let me just say briefly, and this will yeah, be yeah. true for the other streets too. <clears throat> in cases where we're going to make that recommendation, um, we've been told by the city solicitor that we need to, before giving it to the city council, we need to have a survey done, develop a plot plan, and do the legal work necessary to create a package to which we can present to the city council for their final approval. Presumably, they'll approve it at that point, but it is their final decision. Uh, but at this point, we don't have... You're somewhat late in the queue as far as the surveying work and the legal work, and we have not yet been given enough money by the city council to go to do all of the work for all of the streets. So the people later in the queue have both a time issue and we are waiting funding uh, as well. It could be next year before the T's get crossed, the I's get dotted. And in the meanwhile, given the fact that you have received our recommendation for acceptance, plowing will continue as it always has. Or at least that's our intention. Great. Thank you, All right. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. You're welcome. Thank you. That's it. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, and then uh, we have next, um, you need to leave early. We could do, could I have a motion to look at Pine Valley Road extension? So moved. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. Great. I think the, the big thing here is that letter. Is that, is that what people agree with? There's that? a letter on file from the previous director, Sam Brindis, on this about continuing the plowing out there. And he sent that letter to you. I got the letter, and I got another letter from. Good thing you say about this. Files up there, 
right here. This one. The one on the. This one right here is one from uh, Mr. Two Hill. All right, so this is the one we looked at last time. We had a, um, a smaller group here. Let me just read it quickly. Uh, this is from the city solicitor. Through the city solicitor. The city no, solicitor. To, this. to the city solicitor so from, from, from Sam Brandis. Oh, right. Okay. All right, got it. Yes, 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 I understand. So Pine Valley Road extension from Pine Valley Road to a point 430 feet westerly and southerly. And that's a confusing because Pine Valley Road extension does not go westerly. No, it's easterly. Yes. And then suddenly. So it's half right. <laughs> it's a common driveway that's been open for public use for over 20 years. The Department of Public Works has maintained the gravel roadway, including grading, sanding, and plowing to a point along the Raymond Scourge property. So which property is that? Mine. Okay. That's yours. That's my property, yes. Okay. So they have maintained the gravel roadway to a point along... Mrs. Scourge, Scourge's property. We intend to continue the maintenance of Pine Valley Extension as we have done in the past. If the abutters all agree that they no longer want Pine Valley Road maintained, then at that time the department will discontinue all maintenance on the roadway. So that was for 20 years. It seems to be describing her property. Uh, it's confusing that he talks to about a point westerly and southerly. Uh, it just doesn't work westerly. Yeah, I, I would say that I would say that um, the fact that it identifies a specific property by name sort of supersedes the fact that he got his left and his right. He used the wrong left. The other right. Yeah, the other the left. The other westerly. Um, Ned, would you like to uh, weigh in with your thoughts on this? I guess the only thoughts I have is that I know historically, as my understanding, we've been plowing this extension for the longest time. Um, it really doesn't have any connectivity to anything except for two houses on a gravel driveway. There's no city utilities. And I believe that's the only service we've tried up there is plowing services. I'm not sure. I may even occasionally come through and regrade. Maybe a couple times uh, every other few years or something like that. Like we do currently with our current easement we have, which we're looking to make as Pine Valley Road itself, which is our water and sewer easements out there. That's what's currently being used as Pine Valley Road. But the extension, um, like I said, it's, 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 a, it's very much an oddity that we're looking at because it's it's a gravel driveway to two houses is what it is. And we've said no to other uh, better maintained roads to two houses. Uh, tough one. Mike? Well, in view of the, uh, the commitment that was made by the department years ago and um, at least my thoughts on some other similar narrow, lightly used ways, uh, I'm inclined to vote in favor. I would agree with that also, um, mainly on the strength of the letter. Um, I, but I don't I don't view the, the acceptance of this one as tying my hands on other ones. I think that they're ones that I I like more that I'm going to vote, that I may vote against. Okay. But I'll, I will vote for this one. I would say that um, some of the other ones that we sh it shows there's some clear town action that was taken, like we'll lay out the road and we'll send it to the planning board. That is a different standing than a letter from the director of the DPW saying, yeah, we'll do this. And and I really struggled with this one, mm -hmm. as I struggled with the road that it is off of. So I am not inclined mm -hmm. to support this. I and I think that the, the, the fact that we're dealing with I mean, the reason we're doing this whole review is because there has been a ruling that very clearly states that you shall not do this unless. And this is clearly a gravel 
roadway, that's it's not referred to as a street or a way. It's everyone seems to describe it as a common driveway, and I don't find it has sufficient standing to to gain a positive vote from me. Okay. This is. I know we're talking about Pine Valley Road extension, but Pine Valley Road itself went through the same process in 1960-61, where it looks like things were moving towards a petition for acceptance, and then it just fell into nowhere's land. And I see that in, my, in these old board meetings from 1959 and 1960 about the acceptance of Pine Valley, but there's no record of Pine Valley Road extension anymore. Just so the board's aware of that. Is it possible to try to honor the letter and say, excuse me, um, uh, along, to a point along the Raymond uh, Scourge, that, that storage property, and then say when that's no, no longer owned by that person, then we will revert to the other, um, then we'll revert. It's more complicated than so just you're saying you do, you do a we'd honor the letter. acceptance and then do a discontinuance at some point. Yes, right. right. Just, it's, it's more muddy, but it's a way of honoring the letter and and, and certifying that it's and we're trying to honor this letter without. Um, creating a, a platform on which to make other decisions. So you're suggesting we honor it for the current owner, but discontinue it once the right. I think owner. that might be complicated because okay. by the time it goes through the legal and survey process and the city council approves it, and I'm not sure. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, I think it was the hotline. Um, I had to have this survey because of a problem that Mr. Ross forgot. And I gave all of that surveying done for her property, for my property, the Yokovich, further down the road, and uh, it came from Heritage. Okay. I hired them from Southampton. And uh, they came out. And, uh, you know, we went over our deeds, and in my deed, it, it's just how things were, and that we had a right away to come in. My, my point was that going through the entire process, whether we can use your survey or not, and having the city council approve the extension as a city street can't be unwound just because um, the shortages are no, no longer living in that property. It, I think it'd be, I'm not sure the law gives us leeway to Enter in temp yeah. temp temporary agreements. We can never do it. Right. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, we'd, we'd, we'd be the next 1961 gang. Should we? What would they do? So they consider tabling it until we get a better view on the legal oh. aspect of it. So I do. We haven't done. I, mean, I don't we, think we have a motion yet. Is that correct? What opinion are you looking for? Whether there's we're honored well, to the, the significance of the letter today. Yeah. <laughs> Sold to the, to the Twitch in the back. Yeah. I can ask the city solicitor for an opinion on that letter if you'd like. <clears throat> I think we're. I think. I think it's fair to say we're feeling kind of stuck. Mm -hmm. All right. So, is there agreement that we'll table it again? And if we table it, can we take it up again tonight? We should table it to another meeting. To another meeting. Or, well, well I'm just, I think we may make some decisions on other streets that will reflect on this one. And I, okay. 
So that's what I think. That'd be fine. So a motion to postpone discussion until after we discuss the other ones is. Yes. So we're gonna we're not we're not done. Pardon me? Um this was written to Ms. Danza Keys and it went to, and I got a response but I can't find that on a letter from Mayor Higgins. And that was in two thousand six regarding that road. All right, so we're so we're gonna circle back to this yeah, this evening. That's all right. Yeah, I have given a copy of that to here, yeah. but it's there. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and you got a copy from Mayor Higgins about three weeks after that date, and I've searched, and as a secretary for the city of Northampton, I'm ashamed to say I honestly could not find that particular letter, but it relates to that. It's the response. Yep. Okay. Uh, next, we Pocket, can have a motion to uh, discuss Pocket Avenue. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. All right. So Pocket Avenue is down by the Smith Stables. Yes, your name? My name is Barbara Haverbeck, and thank you for the opportunity to speak. I was unable to attend um, the original meeting on May 22nd, where we were voted down. Um, <clears throat> so I appreciate this, the chance to revisit that, and I'm, I'm very glad that um, Mr. Parsons brought up um, the single entity ownership issue, um, because it seemed to me that among a couple of other smaller issues, the main reason that Pocket Avenue was voted down to become a public street was the single owner issue, and it is not a single owner. Currently, that property has eight owners. There are five buildings on Pocket Avenue, four duplexes and a triplex. Is currently owned by eight separate people. So the houses are individually owned? The houses are not individually owned. All five houses are owned by these eight people. Uh, it's not owned descendants by single Descendants of the uh, heirs yes. to the, yes. Absolutely. Okay. It is not a single entity. But I think the, the, the real point is that, that it's a single property, mm -hmm. whether there are two owners or 200. So is it left side, right side, or the two parcels? Well, the pocket avenue is the one. It's confusing how they divided it up, but it's not. It is not a single entity, and that was kind of the main reason that we got voted down. And that was a that was a false premise, probably a misunderstanding of some sort. Um, there were a couple other things someone had mentioned, again, I think it was Mr. Parson at that May 22nd meeting, that he was likening us to a condo association, which it certainly isn't, um, and never has been. It is basically one, this part of it is one. Yeah. Any thoughts, uh, Ned? The deed I'm looking at right now was a deed that was sold From there. Jerry Wallace to Gerard and Jean Wallace, um, it talks about two parcels of land that were transferred that appear to be adjacent to each other, and maybe that's what you're referring to. With two I think the tax. It looks there. like the tax office is one parcel, and the yeah, no, street's a different parcel. Okay. okay. Right. But it's, in any event, it's not a single. So are we talking about the, the parcel that's identified as 38B002? 
<coughs> see that mark. So this parcel that I know of where Paca Avenue is is 38B002. And I'm not sure if 38B001 and 295 are additional parcels that are common ownership by the heirs. Do you know where the buildings are? Yeah, yeah so look, you can see so Pocket Avenue is written in there. Yeah, so they're correct. Not, yeah. Pocket Avenue is split between all the buildings there. The four buildings. Mm -hmm. Mike, do you want to say anything? Yeah, I do. Um, according to your sheet, your master spreadsheet here, we do have water and sewer easements in that way already. It was reconstructed in 2004. Mike, the and then go back. It was reconstructed by the department in 2004 with new water, sewer, pavement. And in addition to it, there was an easement given to a quadrant sewer and young roofing that allowed their sewer pump station to enter in through the back end of Pocket Avenue into the terminal manhole. And that was done probably seven or eight years ago. So it's, it looks as if it's one parcel that might have multiple owners owning that parcel jointly, but it's one legal described, one legally described parcel. Yes? One, one deed. One deed. One deed. One deed with one multiple deed. owners. survey broken up too. But, right. So, all right, so let's see, J just to summarize, the road is certainly wide enough for two-way traffic, it's paved, there are utilities under it, it's curved uh, in many no, ways. No, it's country drainage. It's it's no what? curbing on it. No curbing? Okay. Um, looks a lot like other streets. It's got the peculiarity that one entity on both sides, all the all four houses. And it also has the clarity that we struggle with on some of the other sites that you've got travel and parking that's fairly well defined, even mm -hmm. though. I would say that if it weren't for the fact that it's one parcel, this this would be my standard for a public way. Mm -hmm. um, but because it's one parcel, to me. It, it has a lot of similarities, may not be identical to, but it has a lot of similarities to a condominium arrangement where there is one parcel, then with um, lots of dwellings on it, but there's there's one entity that's responsible for that whole parcel. It might be an individual, it might be an association, it mm -hmm. might be Corporation. an LLC, it might be... But it's not. There's no... There's no LLC, there's no corporation, there's no condo association, there's no... But there's no entity. There's eight separate people. There's no fees, no condo fees. There's no condo fee being paid. There's no condo tax return that is filed. All right. I, I, I think we understand what you're saying. I, so what I believe Mike is trying to say is that in many respects, it, it bears some resemblance to those types of uh, entities. Well, you, you have a family that owns a, all the buildings in the street. And... Uh, it's not a whole lot different than a condo complex. It sounds like since your ancestors built this, they're being punished. If you were to sell, begin selling houses at some point, you know, the, you could come back and say, you know, we're, we're, we've decided to break it up. It, this, this is the point that I struggle with too, is that as I went and looked at some of these drawings, there's no, there's no layout whatsoever, whether it's Not wide enough or something. So, we're, uh, well, if we were to accept this and we were to go out and survey it, we would have to establish a layout because there isn't one at all. We have to define that and then who owns the property. So, even on some of the private ways where the, you can assume the properties go to the center line, but even on some of these drawings, there is a layout that shows up. I don't know. Because I, I would think that if Arquette Avenue were being set up today, it would not be allowed to have 
four or five dwellings on one plot of land. You would have to separate it out. I think you'd have to do a subdivision. You have to do a subdivision. Absolutely. Yeah. So just because, I mean, that was the way things were done a hundred years ago, it was set up that way. I, th I think if you'd set it up like a condo. If you wanted oh, right. one ownership. One or the other, though. It yeah. would be right. defined in a different there way. It could not move forward through the planning department without some kind there, of definition. There is one, one parcel of land here that the city recognizes. I, I think we're opening the door for every condo association to come in and ask I us agree. to maintain their streets. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, I, I'm not saying it's identical to a condo, but I think the fact that it's a single parcel of land I'm not willing to make it that seems, for it. That seems to me to Maybe be a stretch. Well, 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 give, us a give us a chance to talk about it, please. Maybe I should call a question. Well, actually, so to, to, be, to be clear, mm -hmm. we have already, um, this has already been through the voting process and it failed to uh, win support. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it could fail again by virtue of not receiving any motion. In fact, we felt if we're not going to change our mind, then we shouldn't vote. It's, it's a thought. So it's, it's not so much call the question as so... Is there a motion? It, would someone like to make a motion? No. Are you supposed to speak? Yes, you may. Go ahead. So if this was subdivided into four different lots, then it wouldn't qualify. You would need to go through the planning right. board of the ZBA. Right, but if that was approved, which is would be a normal process, because mm -hmm. I'm sure there may be, I'm sure somewhere in North Camp there has to be more than, there has to be one house that maybe has two dwellings on it, so they would go through the same process. So if it was to go through a process to subdivide it, to have another lots, then it would be, and that was granted, which was logical, then it would qualify as a public road. You would, as part of that process, apply for it to become a public right. road, yes. So that logic, so if that could be done, mm -hmm. this would be null and mute. But that's not its standing at the moment that we're trying to make this. Right, I'm just trying to figure out yeah. to going yeah, forward. I think that's, what you're saying sounds reasonable. Right, so it still could go for a subdivision as separate units. Correct. Right. That's mm -hmm. what we're saying. Yeah, there's a, the, the, the city a has a... a uh, the process for that, uh, you know, the, the parameters are well established. You start at the planning board, you just, you know, work your way through the process. And that so, process is inherently to create streets and create frontage so that lots can have their own standing on public ways. Right. I see how it can be done. I'm still just confused about the one other part. Yeah, I'm, I'm very confused about that as well. And, and the likening it to a condo association confuses me. Uh, currently, no, well, there is no street. There is no layout. There's no, it's just a big triangle of land, which happens to have some paved se a paved section of four houses. And that's what the was accepted by the North Hampton City right. for eight years. Right, and it's, we've always received town services. Uh, as um, Mr. Huntley said, the, there's utilities on that street, you own the, the, the water lines underneath the street. Um, there's at least one easement, I think there might be two. There's two. Right. But at the moment, it, it has is not, it's not generated support on this board. Um, I'm just wondering what, I guess that's another thing I'm confused about. I'm wondering what happened between the time we met in early May when I was told that this met all the criteria to become a public street, and if Pocket Avenue wasn't voted in as a public street, no street would. And all of a sudden, it's just completely changed. I can't imagine that anybody in this room made that statement. I certainly did not, and I, I, I would not have. You because did not, sir, but someone did. No. I, 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 I don't see that in my notes. I, I'm. I would be very perplexed because I think at that moment we were all convinced that it actually did not qualify um, and that we were ready. Oh, and that not at all. When, when we met with you at Pocket Avenue on the Saturday before the May 22nd meeting, no, everyone was quite in favor. 
It may not have been clear that, uh, the, the, the way the property was set up. In any event, we have to move on at this meeting. Um, I, I don't know what more I can do for you tonight. Um, the city council makes the final decision. So you can talk to your counselor and also perhaps to the planning department, see if Wayne Fiden has some ideas. Um, or how we, I mean, I, I totally get it. I think we all get the fact that you would like uh, your street to have more official standing and snow plowing. Okay? We understand that. Um, and I'd be happy to hear that you had found a way to make this work. Um, I would suggest talking to your city councilor and to Wayne Fiden and exploring what the options are to get this uh, laid out as a regular street. Thank you very much for the suggestion, right. and I appreciate your time. Sorry that it didn't work out tonight. What's yours next? I, I'm, I'm wondering if that's possible. Yes, absolutely. Kids waiting at the car. Totally. Uh, we have a motion to take the number 10, Edgewood Terrace, on board. So moved. Second. For in favor? Great. Okay, Edgewood Terrace is off of South Street, near those, uh, kind of backs up on those apartments. Um, narrow Street, seven houses, as we've heard. Got that tree where the road ends. Great tree or something. There isn't one like right next to the neighbor. One is predominant, but there are others in that row. It is very similar to pilot. So I was ready to um, support this one, um, although I this is one where I'd like to see the taking um, wider than the pavement width, if, if that's reasonable. We won't be able to do that until we actually have a ground survey right. done, right. and then we can determine that. I know we've had that conversation with Bratton Court about mm -hmm. widening their 10-foot mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right. or right-of-way. Mm -hmm. David? Could we postpone a vote on this until we see a layout, see if it really does work on the ground? It could be several months away. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine why it can't. There's enough land there to make it work. I'm not so sure about that. You know, the, the buildings are pretty close together. But the, the challenge we have is if we don't make a decision tonight, then in the affirmative, then these folks need to make an arrangement to have their street plowed in a couple of months. Well, we could. I, I'm, I'm ready to try to make it work somehow. I think there was Mike. I think that you know we can find a way to make the. I mean, the the real limiting factor here was the narrowness of the the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it would it met this one category that I have to go forward. Gary, I it sound like a motion. I move that we recommend that the city council accept Edward Terrace as a public way. Second. Do you want to make a declarative statement about the width, widening, and the width is um, Yeah. What exactly does that involve? Moving the lines out on a piece of paper. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean. The foundations of the house. Okay. So that's, that's yeah. effectively what you're saying. I think so. Okay. It's an easement, but it would give someone in the future oh, some yeah, room to uh, modify the boundaries of the pavement. I mean, not that they're going to pave out to the edge of the easement. But. So the vote can't be subject to that because we don't know that we can do it, but it would be um, uh, it would be and it would, I don't a know. recommendation to maximize <coughs> the width without up, up to 20 out. feet. Okay. Yeah. And, 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 and we feel that way about, same about Tyler Court and, right. and all of these yeah. narrow. Yeah. Tyler Court just in the way 20 feet wide. Yeah, 20 seems to be a mm -hmm. Tyler Court is listed at 20 feet on the criteria thing, but I remember Gary and I marched it off and it was like a, a it was like an NBA 20 feet. Yeah. <laughs> it was narrow, but uh, I think that 
you include the sidewalk and you include yeah. the part that goes right to the fence, I think you probably would find No, I'm, 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 I'm not. I'm, yeah, I'm not an athlete. And I think you could, find, you could get 20 feet in between all those buildings all the way to the back, too. What's the problem? Uh, at Edward. So the motion then has been revised to, to, to say with a recommendation to provide a layout of at least 20 feet. All in favor of approving this recommendation to the City Council to approve Edgewood Terrace? Aye. 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 Against. <laughs> okay. So that is unanimous. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're Thanks welcome. for coming in. Uh, so let's circle back up to the top now. Number four, discussion and vote um, on Bank Ave. Bank Ave is next to Jake's, behind Sylvester's, the alley there. We have not received a petition for this, so I believe no action is required. Then we pass it. I'm big on that. Okay. Yep. Uh, yep. Discussion vote on street acceptance for Bradford Street South. Now again, this is that uh, it's near that new uh, pump station. It's the beautifully paved driveway to the two houses. Is it paved? Yes, yeah, it's it lovely pavement by the city as recently as like five years. I think it was done three years ago. What's the width of it? Car width? Yeah, like 12. Maybe 12 feet? It's it's narrow. narrow. It's narrow. Yeah. Not too high. I don't think we'll find the no trees for this. Question mark. Question mark on the width. Um, mm -hmm. There is, well, um, of course I'm not looking at official city documents, but there is um, a layout. There's a, a lot of Bradford Street layouts. Uh, well, we looked at three sections of Bradford Street while we were so there. That's, that's so this is that southern part there. Just because yeah. I had to stitch these right. together to mm -hmm. the maps, but I don't know why they call this Bradford Street and that Bradford Street. This Bradford Street. This is I know Bradford Street South. So there is, at least on this zoning map, that back home, it looked like a layout. It is. It, it, the appearance of the parcel ID show that it looks like it has a layout yeah. when it doesn't. I do have a map here from the turn of the century on this street. plans I were able to find on Bradford Street, as we call Bradford Street South, and it's a, it was called Broad Street, was the name of the subdivision, and it's, I'm trying to see what date it was, 1918, and if you look at this, you have Bradford Street here, as you know, coming down from the industrial park. We have Bradford Street running towards the pump station, and then we have this Bradford Street South here. It shows lots. It doesn't show a roadway, though. And by scaling off, this red dash line is about where Bradford Street South is now. So it's really not even according to this. Do those, those lots have access to Brad Street on the other side, right? They have access to... Bradford Street there. Bradford Street, and then, and then this is Bradford Street North that hooks around to the Comcast building. Right, but that one, talk, they have access, those have access to the next one over? Is it through? No. 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 Only Chris, some. here's a south is right. I, right yeah. Hands. This is right on the four corners, so this is one map, two maps. This would be the edge of another. It appears another. to continue, but it stops at the second house. Gotcha. Yeah, the pavement doesn't go any farther, but it's... No, I was just wondering if, if they all had... If, if, the, if, the, if, the, if the parcels have been laid out with the frontage along this Bradford Street, and they had just sort of put in a convenience road yeah. in the back. No, there are houses uh, with a vacancy in there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that is, if you look at that, yeah. and you look at the... And this is from 2011. How those two are in the garage. Right. Okay.
right, so again, we have um, in the past voted that this not meet what we thought were reasonable standards to count the street. Um, I'm ready to make a motion to approve it. Okay. So I, approve, I, rec I move that we recommend to the City Council that Bradford Street South be accepted with a recommendation for a 20-foot wide layout. Second. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor of approving Mike's motion to recommend that the City Council approve uh, um, uh, Bradford, Bradford Street <laughs> Extension. <laughs> Bradford Street South to become a city street. All right. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? With a 20 foot layout. With a 20 foot layout. Yes. Okay, nice. <clears throat> I lost it. Bratton Court. Brett, Brett, Brett. Okay. Bratton Court. Bratton Court is, I, I did this mostly for myself. I, all right, that's in Florence. It's uh, near Cooper's, and it's that nice little street that ends at the bike path. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, there are two that, that do the same. Wilder. Wilder. Wilder and Bratton. And Wilder is a city street. We already, we already we approved. That we approved it. All right. Yeah. And, and Breton is like a bedroom terrace. It's 10 foot wide right of way. And in this particular street, we have rain, water, and sewer in it. And there's a quasi public access to the rail trail through the back. Yeah, she says it's it's on her deed. According to the stuff I found online, it looks like the city owns the property with it. Oh, that's shows. the family that maintains the land <coughs> up to the, okay. Yeah. People cross over their property, but yeah. there is, that, they there actually is a created path. a yeah. little path yeah. that they sort of maintain, which I think is yes. city yes. property. I move that we recommend to the city council that Bratton Court be accepted as a public way with a recommendation for a 20-foot layout. Aye. Aye. Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Um, Bottoms Road, dirt road near the, uh, the bridge. Uh, we went to it um, in the absence of a, uh, an official petition. The city council had not referred the matter to us, so we went on our own. So the fact that we went there has no standing. But we voted, uh, our vote was that it did not meet what we considered minimal criteria. And there's no petition on it? No petition still. No action required. No action required. No action required. Okay. Center court. I think this is very similar to Paquette, and that we should not. Um, what do we do in that? We do, we do not do anything. Uh, there are multiple owners in Center Court. All right, let me thank you, David. You're right. Right. Um, it's a parking lot with it's a, a parking an alley yeah. and yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's very similar to Park Avenue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Now, Ned uh, took some time to go there this afternoon. Yep. And I believe he has some thoughts on this. So, <clears throat> on Center Court, you know, it's an alleyway basically between two buildings that goes to parking spaces for various businesses back there. Uh, the city does have a water line back there, and it has a well known documented drainage issue back there, too, that kind of there is no storm system back there. Uh, at least one of the owners has talked about putting in a, their own stormwater system to make sure that these large puddles don't occur going forward. The other issue with the, the uh, street itself or the alleyway is that there's decent parking on the side of the private way for the Elks building. That I'm not sure how you take that away or enforce no parking in there during snow events because it's on private property as far as I can tell that could have a detrimental effect of plowing. Uh, there's been quite a bit of work inside the center court of upgrades of buildings and so on, but once you drive in there, it's basically a parking lot is where you're trying to find, to go to businesses or perhaps a resident or two in there. So if you take out the deeded parking, what's the actual width of the driveway then? 12, well, the, 15 feet? It says 15 on here. Yeah. And you probably have close to 15 feet plus the parking that's there. 
But that parking, I don't believe, existed until the Elks building was remodeled back eight years ago, mm -hmm. ten years ago. You know, I particularly appreciated what Mike said in terms of that commingling of the park, the parking mm -hmm. and the traveled way, and it that area behind Center Court. I mean, it, it's just undefinable. When I was doing my research, <laughs> I, again using the city maps, building maps, they do have a layout that says center court, but it's a funny shape and it doesn't go all the way to the property. So it's kind of like, I mean, I could almost see, all right, you plow the part that says center court and then what? Who goes from there? And, but you're right, you're entering the parking lot. Mm -hmm. So I have a map here that was given to me by Floyd Andrus, and it shows Center Court, and it's right away, and what they believe from the 1903 deed to be the right away through there. Dark black just here just is just an overlay of a plan that was done for the four okay. center court condominiums yeah. okay. and showing additional parking spaces that would be accommodating for the people that lived here. Mm -hmm. The planning board wants to make sure they have parking. And then, like I said, you have one, two, three, four dedicated parking spaces along the right of way also. So that was part of the building. That's project. correct. And uh, those, those parking spaces were a hot button issue within the little group of property owners. Mike, you were going to? Well, I was going to say uh, we've already um, made a negative recommendation on this one, I believe. Yes. That's so I'm, I'm not prepared to make a motion. Second that lack of motion. Yes. Okay. Right. In, in motion. <laughs> <coughs> All right, so we're going to move on from Center Court. Uh, next is Clark Street. Uh, Clark Street um, is where we have the town wells for the drinking water. Uh, and at the time when it came up last, we didn't have a quorum. Um, MJ uh, will have to rec recuse herself. She owns property on that street. Other than that, it's terribly controversial. Right. Mm -hmm. I move we recommend the city council. I second that. Second clerk, excuse me. Is there a motion, please? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, all in favor of recommending yeah. that the Very city council so. designate Clark Street as an official city street? Aye. 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 Okay. I abstain. Abstain. So one abstention. Uh, it's not Herbert Abbott, it's Hebert Abbott. Hebert. 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 Right. And they specifically requested that they not be made a public way. Right. That's correct. And I remember That's promising right. them we'd be able to help them with that. Yeah, and I was <laughs> trying to figure out why it was tabled. I don't know why. Because we, we knew if we had gone to the trouble of designating it, saying that it failed to meet minimal criteria, that we'd have to do it again anyway. Okay. So by then we, we could see how this was all going to play out. Gotcha. Okay. So the issue with Hebert Avenue is that we have water and drain lines that go down there down to the Connecticut River, or the excuse me, the Mill River. And as far as I can tell, we have no easements for there. Hebert Avenue, all the properties are pinned and bounded like there is a way there. It talks about in their deeds Hebert Avenue and along that street. So it isn't like they own up to the center street. Technically they do by law since it's never been accepted, but it's pinned and bounded like there's a street there. My biggest concern is that's one of our main accesses for flow control, the mill, mill river diversion channel. And I'd like to make sure that whatever vote you take, that we request that we look at getting easements to put that sole purpose of the uh, flood control access. Well, we had talked at that time about having you 
making that part of the, the bargain. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think, let's just, so we should... Uh, I think it's just the taking that we do, by taking the easement, but I think the residents down there want to ensure that the purpose is for flood control access and not other activities, i.e. a bike path extension. Yeah, I was going to say a rail trail extension. Do we need to include that in the motion? Yeah, I'm trying to think. So what, what is the motion that you voted on this one before? No, we have it's not. just tabled. It's tabled before. So we're looking for a, um, a vote that we feel Hebert does not meet the criteria to become a designated city street, but we would like the staff to prepare the other documents for the utility easements and the flood control easements uh, signed off before this matter can be put to rest. Mm -hmm. Does that sound reasonable? Mm -hmm. So moved. Second. Does that make sense, BJ? Yep. Okay. Is there a second? Oh, yeah, and yeah. We have a second. Yep. Uh, all in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 Great. Uh, King Ave. King Ave is kind of, it's off of Bardwell near Florence Casket. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the one that started it off. Yes. <laughs> Lovely little street, but on the narrow side. That we recently paid. We recently rebuilt. Yeah. Not just paid. Would someone like to make a motion for acceptance? I'd like to make a motion that we accept King Avenue. Second. All in favor of accepting King Avenue? What are we doing? Excuse me, do we want to make a recommendation? It's at 15 feet or 20 feet taking? For a 20 feet width? Good idea. MJ, is that? Then I is that part of your motion? Yes, it is. That um, that we attempt a twenty foot uh, easement mm -hmm. or twenty foot width. I think we can squeeze fifteen. I'm not sure if we'll be able to get twenty. Well, I I don't think there are any buildings that would improve. Mm -hmm. There's a garage very close to one of the pavement edges, and currently it's paved up to get thirteen feet wide. So we'll, we can try. Yeah, do your best. Okay. Okay. All in favor of recommending that the city council approve or accept King Ave as a city street Aye. Aye. with the provisions as on that. Thank you. Uh, next uh, for your discussion, Massasoit Avenue, that little street across from the YMCA parking lot. We looked at this once without a petition, once with a petition. Didn't change, did it? Okay, it did not change. A motion that we accepted, provided we work for the 20 foot wide easement width. Second. Do you think there's 20 feet there? Yes, that will be to I don't, Yes. Well, I do. Between buildings? Yeah. Yeah. There's, if that's even close. Which, if you stand out there and look at it, it yeah, it's 60 feet between the buildings. And I think that so, what we're asking is that they clearly want to be a, a town street, and we're asking that they give us the additional width to do it as best we can. Yeah. So one of the oddities with this particular street is that it's all private utilities. It's private sewer that runs from the two homes out back and goes cross-country lots to the next street over. The water lines are curb services, curb stops at the property line, and individual water services that feed in. So if you take this as a public way, you're asking us to take responsibility of those underground utilities also as city water lines or private service lines? Mm. Without knowing what their current status oh, is. Ooh, that's not good. Can we deed those back to them? Or as part of the deal that we accepted as a public way, provided that they assume responsibility back to the point certain that it is right now? Well, it seems so muddy. I don't think uh, the fact that it's a public way presumes that we accept responsibility for private utilities. I mean, it would have to be written into the document that the city has no responsibilities for any underground utilities. That's what I heard in the motion. You said the sewer actually goes to Franklin. Yes. I don't see how that can affect it. Well, it's, it's the water services, I guess. I understand that. And they tie in at Massasoit Street, right? Water services? Not Massasoit. 
Do they have individual water meters? Yes, they do. Okay. And individual taps into the line? Yes. So if it's only water, that's actually minimal um, responsibility. I, that's fairly stable service, right? Well, can I get one clarification? <clears throat> Did you say that there's actually four taps on Massasoit for the four houses? So there's two. No, there's two houses. There's two that. houses at the end of Massasoit. Yeah, they each have their own tap. That's correct. Okay. So we're talking about the two houses okay. that extend on Massasoit Avenue. And have their water lines that come up Massasoit Ave and tie into Massasoit. Yes. So there's two lines. Right. And what I don't know is because we don't have record plans of it is where their sewers go from their houses. I know they go into a combined line that drop down to Franklin Street. Yeah. So it's not an easy one. Yep. If we go back to the time we visited Glendale, I think it's called, that backs up to Mary Brown's Dingle. Mm -hmm. Glendale Street. I, I think the sewage line probably runs across the Dingle to Glendale. I mean, it's, it's so simple to do that. And Franklin is way up on a hill by comparison. I believe Glendale has its own sewer line in the street. Right, but I think this one connects to it. And logically, it, it would and should. No. Next to Franklin Street. Right. So, Ned, if I could just circle back to my question. A water line, we rarely have trouble with water lines. Uh, I mean, I get it. We have two private water lines running under our pavement, which have the street. But that's fairly, is it fair to say that's fairly minimal exposure? They do break occasionally. And usually they're the homeowner's responsibility, not the city. After the curb stop, is usually at the property line, and it's their full responsibility after that. I just want to be sure in your motion that you're not asking the department to take on the responsibility of taking over private utility services with this. Is that implied if it's a city street? I don't think if it's a city street, unless we specifically said in the deed that we have no maintenance responsibilities, that would clear that matter up. So what happens when the homeowner has a maintenance issue and they need to replace that line and they're going to trench down our city street? With a trench permit. Okay. And they have to follow the criteria to repair the road. They'll go yep. hand to the city street like anybody else. Yep. Okay. So that seems reasonable. Would we want that in perpetuity though? I mean, would it be simpler to just assume we're taking a small risk and move on? We haven't taken the risk anywhere else. I'm not. I'm, I'm trying to think of. We have another similar situation in front of us. I can't think of one. Yeah. Well, Edgewood has got a four-inch cast iron water main. That's ours. So. Yes. Baker Hill, where where the pavement is not. Uh, up to snuff, but it, it, but it's a developer obligation, or maybe it's a homeowner obligation. I don't know how it's structured. Baker Hill Road, the first thousand feet is a is all set. Yeah. No, well, it's a private way. The first thousand feet also, and then the developer extended it quite a distance past that, and extended all the utilities with it also, and those also are, I believe, eight-inch water lines, eight-inch sewer lines. Private or public? All private. Once you, this is the gray area of Baker Hill Road. You have a development that happened after the private way. The city has not in, installed utilities for the first thousand feet. After that, the Baker Hill Association put in all the other utilities and carved out the lots and extended the roadway. So Baker Hill is a real. But we've recommended acceptance. You have. So it's the same as it's a similarly murky. You're not dealing with individual water services. You're dealing with a water main with services coming off of it like a traditional subdivision. If you look at any one of these ways we're looking at, something like um, uh, Bradford Street South, we have a four-inch water main in it with two house services off of it. You've historically always maintained that water main. What about Cosmere? 
Cosmian has a sewer line, but I believe there's a question Jim, on water. There's only two houses. Well, could I? Go right ahead, Jim. I was going to say, I think there is a service line in Cosmian. No. A service line or private line? So what's your bottom line then? What's the bottom line is your choice. <laughs> Killing me. I mean, I... I I mean, you went from a no decision to now you're doing a yes, which I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. And just so I want to make sure that the language is clear that I'm not going to go in and fix an individual house service. But do we have any other public streets with similar restrictions? Well, we're not talking about the, we're talking about the utility. We're not talking about the street. I understand, but I, don't, I can't think of any other streets that have similar restrictions. And the point I'm trying to make is I think our exposure here is yeah, tiny. Yeah. A couple of little but, water lines going. Well, that, that's but we can also clarify it as we accept it. Well, that was my feeling too. We clarified still. Each, still that we, don't we didn't need. accept their yeah. private water, water service. Right. Yeah. We were granting them actually an easement in our public way to have that private service that they're responsible for. Uh, yeah, our, our responsibility ends at the gate. Wherever the water gets shut off, which in this case is at Massasoit yeah. Street, they own the service from their path. Okay. And if they yeah, uh, let's trench go through a city street, which in this case might be necessary Avenue, they'd have to do all of this stuff that they would normally do if they were trenching out into the street to put in a new service. So a motion was made on this? Yes. Did we vote? No, the no. So we need the motion to, uh, to be amended such that uh, we acknowledge that there are private water lines. I make a motion the that we Ned, are, we, are you satisfied with where this is headed? I believe so. That we okay. accept Massasoit Avenue as a public, or we recommend it for acceptance as a public way, provided that we clearly, uh, that we uh, make clear stipulation that that acceptance is contingent on the existing private water lines that exist under the way. I mean, we should say private utilities, because some of that sewer line probably sneaks under the end of yeah. the street. Remains the responsibility of the property owners. Yeah. And, and try to extend it to 20 feet. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Got that, BJ? Yeah. All right. I think we have a second. Second. All no. in second. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor of recommending that the city council declare Massasoit Avenue to be a public street. All right. All right. <laughs> Uh, next is Meadow Avenue. That's that little driveway in Florence near the uh, graveyard. Off and Spring Street. This is Spring Street. And we do not have a petition. This is the one where the, the sole resident That's strongly right. requested that it not yeah. be made a, right. a, 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 a public way. Yeah. And we have already voted that uh, we don't think it meets minimal criteria. No action is required. Yep. No motion. Actually, um, you've never seen a, a petition for Meadow Avenue either. Right. Right. No. right, right, That's what I meant to just say. I'm not sure what words came. No, out. you said you said that. You okay. said. So we don't need we don't need to do it. Right. All right. Good All right. Good thing this isn't being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Park Avenue. That's one of the ones we looked at really early in the process. It's off of Trumbull. It feeds those condominiums in the back. Mm -hmm. For park. For park. Mm -hmm. Uh, already I can see where you're headed. <laughs> All right, so, uh, you know, again, it was I'd like to I'm see the okay. plan for this one. Uh, what were you coming up? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, I'm, I'm not inclined to make a motion to change our opinions. No. I'm not inclined either. Yeah, see, sort of my feelings. Is In my other plan, plan. Yeah. And as I recall, does it a public way or a private way only go up one little shot and it doesn't continue? It goes, the way? It goes to the point where everything turns. Right. Yeah. So it's, does that look like it? It goes roughly 100 feet, 110 feet. It's plus a straight minus. shot and it's not Yeah. 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 So this is the open space? It's the open space. Yeah. Okay. The, mm -hmm. the parking is to the, you come in and this is the, yeah. the parking lot. Yeah. It looks like. Yes, very much like that. I'm going to direct it. I believe we looked at this. We said no. We got a petition. We looked at it again. Mm -hmm. We did. Mm -hmm. We sent this one twice. Still got a no. Yep. And yep. so, if no one has second thoughts on it, we can. No action is required. 
Okay, now we jump to Taylor Street. That's off of Jackson. Remember, there was the loop. Uh, Prospect Height went up on one side, and the plow would go around behind the house and come back down Taylor Street. Yeah. And the woman who owned it was uh, content that it would not be a city street. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. It was one of the very first places. I think it was the first day. Yeah. We've never received a petition. Nope. We voted not to recommend. And I don't, so no action is required. No action. And then Water Street Rear is uh, that driveway in Leeds, near the Leeds Post Office. Mm -hmm. And um, the owner is comfortable with the fact that we will not be plumbing his driveway. Okay. So go ahead. <laughs> I think, again, no action is required. And we voted no previously. Okay. Yeah. In the absence of a petition, nor did we ever, and we have not subsequently received a petition. Uh, now, there's one more, well, there are two more. Um, one more is View Avenue, which is that little street off of North Street near Seleuzniak. It is and not on the agenda. Yeah, it was not properly posted, so we're going to have to do it another day. But it also never received a petition. A petition. Yeah. So, so we, we shouldn't voted no? We shouldn't be discussing it because we haven't put public notice to the abutters that we might be talking about your private way. Right, yeah. right, right, right. So right. that's going to show up on our next meeting, just a, a one unit. Okay. Woohoo! And then, oh no, it's not woohoo yet. We have to. No, and then we get to go out and do another site. Oh, okay. Visit. No, we don't. No. no. We just, it'll just come up at our next meeting. Okay, good. And then we circle back. Oh, right. I, okay. I'm Pine Valley Road extension could be discussed now or, or it's. So I it's would true. like to point out that we have. I'm, I'm just a, just an observation. I'm not advocating one way or the other, but um, the um, that we have made some move. Uh, we have made some votes that have been contingent on widths, utilities. I don't know if that helps or hurts. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out. Good to know. Uh, we've voted <coughs> streets to become public ways that only have two houses on them. So on that basis, I'm ready to make a motion to accept Pine Valley Road extension with a recommendation to make it 20 feet wide. Second. Further discussion? All in favor of making this recommendation to the City Council? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. One opposed? Okay. You're all set. It did pass. It did pass. Life is good. Thank you all. You're welcome. Thank you for coming Thank in. You. Took us a while to get there. <laughs> all right. You were dozing off. I can't believe that. <laughs> to take stormwater and flood control update out of
we have the two subcommittees. One's on rates. One is on or how to how to apportion the bills. One's on credits. Um, in addition, I've asked Jim and Doug to put together a couple of pages explaining the methodology for calculating the size of parcels and the content of parcels in terms of impervious and pervious sections, um, and to lay out the bones of what the appeal process might look like should someone feel that their bill was calculated incorrectly. Um, I think we need to have this in um, advance of our meeting next Wednesday when we'll lay all of this out for the public at JFK. It's an obvious question. How do we know? How do you make the bill? What if there's a mistake? Who do we talk to if we have a, a, one, um, a review? So I've asked them to do that. Um, in terms of setting the bills, as many of you know, um, we're trying to follow the task forces model as closely as we can. The biggest change is that I'm going to suggest that you consider sending the city a bill. Um, the, uh, the mayor's office is aware of this. The city councilors, by and large, are aware of this. Um, that every every entity gets it's a it's a utility. Everyone gets a bill. Uh, we have monkeyed around with whether there should be tiers for residential houses. So a standard fee for houses that are have property less than half an acre, another standard fee, two and a half or one. And it's proving surprisingly difficult to get crisp, accurate square footages for properties. Uh, there are parts in the GIS calculations don't match up exactly with the assessor's office calculations. And when you dig more deeply into the assessor's office calculations, you'll find anomalies and areas that aren't crisp and clean. And in terms of nonprofits, I understand that since they're not in the tax rolls, uh, everything becomes extremely fuzzy around the area of non nonprofits. One proposal uh, coming from the staff was that we make a single standard fee for all residential properties between one and three families. It turns out to be a pretty reasonable number. It's $125 per year. Um, and that, that takes 6,500 or so properties. I think 6,600 off the table. Like, there you go. That's your number. That's the math. End of discussion. Okay. And then the, uh, the more care and attention can be saved for uh, larger properties, commercial properties, nonprofit properties. Um, I'm sorry. Did, yes. Did, is there a, a I don't know if I, I, went some, I went to the Bahamas for a moment, but um, is there a, an estimate for um, what the impact on total revenue is going to be if we were to go to that single, single fee? No impact. Uh, there was, it's, it's we did, they did probably 9 to 13, if you count the 9 A's and B's and so on, and there was not probably more than a $3,000 variation in the impact on the revenue. We're, we're trying to hew to the task force's, you know, breakout of how much was from the commercial sector, how much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're but trying, it was interesting. We're trying to keep it yeah. neutral in terms of not suddenly shifting the burden to this group or to that group. Yeah. Are we going to run? A, are we going to run into an equity argument from from citizens on that one? I don't think so. I'm paying where a three family guy pays. I had suggested one and two families, um, and uh, th there were some people who thought three should be included. I'm, I'm not opposed to any. I'm just raising what I see as no. potential red flags. But without going, if I can just speak in my microphone, you guys can jump in. But if you're thinking about one family and three family houses, it, without doing a, an assessment of each property, it's really hard to know what's permeable and what's mm -hmm. impermeable. And a three family. It's more consolidated. Who knows? We may have less. Um, sure. I was just going to say that the, the task force had recommended a flat fee for a single family, for two family, and three family. And the fees, as they had been drafted by the task force, under that scenario, without the tiers, was 144 for single family, 
one twenty five for two family and a three family was one forty nine. Right, that's when we had the funky thing where two families were less than one family. So very close. So if you're suggesting a flat fee for one through three, then you're pretty much spot on with what the task force is recommended anyway. Totally cleans up a whole area of yeah. And I think you could argue yeah. that in life, the way we're doing it, yeah. it has the virtue yeah. of simplicity, which I yeah. which I think is. So I've also asked Jim to. Um, well, all right. I guess I said that. So this will all be down on a piece of paper. How we're going to get the information? Are we going to pay to have a survey, an aerial survey done? Are we going to use the state's data? Are we going to use the assessor's data? Are we just you know. How do, Exactly what the mechanics are for this will be all spelled out in advance of our meeting next Wednesday at JFK. Um, in terms of credits, I guess the credit committee has put together enough of a form that the staff has been able to take it to the next level and make it a little more concrete. Uh, one of the tasks we have is to come up with a prospective ordinance for the city council to consider. And we're uh, talking about modeling that on the ordinance that Westfield uses. The city solicitor has looked at it and says, yes, that format looks reasonable. Uh, we're just basically kind of keep trying to move forward on all the, the fronts. Uh, at the meeting next week, we'll s present what we've got, show it to the public, get their feedback, answer their questions. And then after that meeting, we'll try to bring it all together in preparation for giving this to the City Council. So I imagine meeting next week, show it to the public, answer questions, get comments. Staff will work on it in the intervening week, and then the following week it will come before us in a, a somewhat finished form, in, in a finished form. I actually met um, somebody at the uh, Pirate Valley Planning Commission thing on, on stormwater who helped draft the, the Westfield ordinance. Um, so it might be helpful for our people to talk to, to her. Yeah, you get that information. Yeah, I mean, to the extent we need to, we can do that. Yeah, we're pretty she, off, she offered. She was yeah. very good. Okay. So we're moving toward a public informational session next Wednesday, and then it'll come back before us in two weeks. Hopefully we can get behind a, a package to give to the City Council and then they will begin their whole process, referring it to Ordinance Committee, having their own public hearings and you know, moving the process forward. Doug, do you have anything to add? Excuse me. Yes. The session, is it at is it, uh, JFK? JFK, 7 p.m., uh, September 18th, which is Wednesday night. And is it going to be filmed by NCTV? Yes. It is. Broadcast live. I like to hear. So you can stay home. <laughs> well, I may go. I may just want oh, to go, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, the one that you, the one you recommended. It was really cool. Yeah. Hey, um, Carrie. Yes. Um, I'm wondering about how to get the word out to the public. Um. Well, as soon as we have these documents, I'm hoping to call Chad Kane and get an article in the Gazette. And I've talked. With um, Bill, uh, no, the other Bill there, Newman. Bill Newman, about getting on his show. Uh, but Bill Dwight also, he's got like nine gazillion Facebook fans. He could Facebook it. Yeah. But we need some. We need some. Uh, this is the next one. Yeah. Yeah. This is not that silly. This is just telling. That'll get people there. What'd you say? Yeah, that's the true. Front page of the Gazette will get people. So Jim and Doug are working real hard to kind of put this down on paper, so that uh, there's something we can show people and talk about. You're waiting for that to tell people what there's a meeting. No, but if I if, if we get together with Chad Kane. I mean, if I just tell him that there's a meeting, it won't be much of an article. He'll want a chance to begin How previewing. Do you tell him? We're having a meeting. Put them in the chest. Tell him. <laughs> no, I, I think if if we he could preview the sorts of things we'll be talking about at the meeting, I think that might. Rate information and the credit uh, draft credit ideas for the subcommittees. 
plus the data management memorandum. Yeah, the, I mean, that sounds like the, that would be the bones of an interesting article. I think it'd be fascinating. <laughs> okay. Put some complicated numbers in there, too. Do some, uh, what, what's that? Do some fuzzy math. We don't do fuzzy math. Oh, okay. I'm just trying to fix the fuzzy math. All right, well, I, that's a thought, anyway. But, you, but you're right, though. We have to. So, Mike, thanks. Sure. Thank you. So, Mike, before you leave, I just yep. included that in case you can come tomorrow, which right. I don't think you can. I can uh, These are diagrams that are going to be discussed tomorrow at the Conference of Wastewater Management meeting at 1 o'clock here. Ooh. I don't care to attend. No, I, I, am, I, I care. So sorry. We focus on the collection system. Well, last time it was David carried it on. See you, Michael. I really appreciate it. One o'clock tomorrow? One o'clock. It's one to three. Can you come tomorrow? I'm with Then I send you a mail. I'm much ready to be here. You did, but I didn't. So I know that you already have the previous documents, but I don't believe that you had these or the capacity to okay. develop these plans. So that's why I made you all copies today. Thank you. You know, those little God, dots. there's a lot of red on this. Manholes, I assume. 1860. Yeah, I know. Isn't it fascinating? Yeah, it really is. We should move on. Yeah, moving on to the request for permission to occupy. Pulaski Park on Monday, October 14th, from 12 to 2. And the mayor has approved a waiver of all fees for the Polish Heritage Committee. And we do have police department concurrence on it. Good to go. So we have a we have a motion and a second. All in favor of letting the uh, Pulaski Day Parade Commemorative Committee? Aye. Aye. Uh, claims Committee meeting for 123 Lake Street. The sewer backup. Okay. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Just so the board knows what they're getting into, the claims committee knows what they're Okay, so that's up a five, 525 meeting? Um, that kind of a sewer backup? 525? I like 515. Yes, sir. Okay. So that's the 25th. September 25th. Is that right? That's yeah. correct. Did, did we already see the BJ? Did you already send us the information on this one? No, I sent you the one today, but no, not yet. Right. I'll send it tomorrow. You know, well, I suppose you want to get it done. I find it like I was looking for it today, for today, and it was so far back. You know, Too far back. Well, but I don't want to forget. Yeah, I know. That's I know. why you do it. All right, I'll, I'll just look further back. No, I can, I can try to remember. No, she hasn't sent that. that. You have I sent the information on the planes. Mm -hmm. Google Mail. Mm -hmm. Call up. Yeah. Everything you've received from her, it shows up earlier. Well, I can, I can no. do that. Pretty easy to find it. You have to use your new email, though. What? All right, next, a uh, contract <laughs> for uh, <laughs> permit modification for landfill monitoring to Brown and Caldwell. Mm -hmm. Second. Well, I um, guess I'll try to cover this for Jim. Uh, basically, with the closure of the landfill, we're requesting the state to reduce the amount of groundwater monitoring that we're doing at the current landfill. Uh, so basically, they'll be looking at the parameters we currently test for, the reduction that we've seen over the years, and come up with a future plan that hopefully DEP will uh, buy into of reduced monitoring. Most closed landfills do this type of activity at closure. And we're trying to do also is slow down the, the um, our post closure care costs, which were set aside prior to closure. We're trying to set, save that money also for future use. So there's three parts of the scope of services. One is conducting the evaluation of historic monitoring data and make recommendations for reductions in sampling locations and frequencies based on contaminant trends and uh, groundwater flow direction and other groundwater data. Uh, prepare a report back in the evaluation and submitting to DEP for their approval. Okay. All in favor of 
letting out this contract for permit modification. No. Modifying contract for consultant to help us modify our permit. Aye. 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 Okay. Yes. Great. Aye. Thank you. Contract for the Kennedy Road paving project, the lane construction, in the amount of six hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars. Second. There goes our allocation of chapter ninety funds. <laughs> really? <laughs> so Kennedy Road was originally scheduled to be a chip seal this year. And we put it out to bid as a chip seal, rubberized chip seal contract. And we had one vendor who took out the plans, all state asphalts actually, and came back and said, this is not a candidate for this type of repair. We sat down with BHBR consultant and with um, uh, all states and went through this and said, this is a re reclamation project, which is a full depth reclamation, basically pulverizing the roadbed down eight inches and putting back two layers wow. of bituminous on top. Um, we actually estimate our in-house estimate was about nine thousand dollars or nine hundred thousand dollars, and we were very happy with the bids that did come in. And the bid record ranged from laying at six hundred sixty-four thousand nine hundred dollars to a high bid of seven hundred twenty-eight thousand three hundred twenty-five dollars by Palmer Paving. So we did get three quotes on this. Oh, that's great! And three hundred thousand dollars less than what you estimated. Did you say not? You estimated nine hundred and some. We estimated nine hundred thousand yeah. dollars approximately for the project. Okay, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. David, I'm just curious, how long of section of road was this roughly? Mm, we'll have to ask that question. I think it's eighty-eight hundred feet plus or minus. Oh, mile over a mile, mile oh, and a half. Oh, so it's quite a length. It goes from the bridge at Chesterfield Road, the new bridge, all the way to the Williamsburg Town Line. So it covers part of Audubon Road. There's additional 1,200 feet of Audubon Road that it covers into also. We've had a number of claims in the past four or five years on that road, and a number of stretches of uh, rims being broken, tires blown out due to potholes. Utilities are okay. I'm there are sure no utilities out, out there. No water. No water. Oh, interesting. That's no right, sewer. Of course. There's some cross culverts for drainage, and that's about it. I'm just curious about the two layers. What you, is it two and two or? It's two and two. Two and two. And will the material that you're reclaiming just be regraded and remain in place, or is some of that going to be reused? What happens is they we pulverize eight inches total. We take out four inches, so we yeah. build the back road back up to the original grade, basically with a crown. Okay. So, all in favor of approving the contract to the lane construction for repaving Kennedy Road? Aye. Aye. Change does order. Really take all of chapter 90? Pardon me? Does that really consume all of chapter 90? No, we actually have uh, $1,026,000 was the appropriation this past year. We were supposed to see about $1.5 million, mm -hmm. but that has not passed through. They tried to give communities a 50% increase. Uh, they actually only released half the funds this year, uh, 500 and something thousand the first part of it. Um, and then just recently they allocated the second half. So we're fully funded at a million, a little over a million dollars again. Okay. Change order number one to contract 30-14 for the Upper Roberts Meadow Reservoir Dam removal design and permitting the GZA in the amount of 2,500. <laughs> 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 This is a change order uh, for GCA to prepare a grant application for us. The, uh, the state recently came out with uh, a grant and loan program for uh, dams and levees. Um, I forget the specifics of it. There's, there's a, a few million bucks available statewide for grants and loans. Um, the focus on the dams is high hazard dams and poor condition like the province. So we had asked GZA to prepare a grant application on our behalf. Um, the scope of the work was 2500 bucks to put together the grant application, and we applied for a grant uh, up to $75,000 to cover design cost. So we felt like it was a pretty good um, bet to, uh, to submit the grant application in hopes of getting $75,000 out of it. So we did the work. It was you know, a short order thing. It was a very short fuse in the application. Do we know when the decision is going to be made on the grants? I... Yeah, it's fairly 
<laughs> it's fairly quick. I don't know the specific date, but it would be like the November time frame in the fall. So. so design this fall and the winter for the construction of the spring? If we, we have if we have if we can get the permits. So all in favor of approving this contract? Aye. Aye. Contract for the Mill River Levy repair to Northern Tree Service in the amount of one hundred and ninety eight thousand dollars. Part of the uh, Army Corps of Engineers um, mandated repair work on uh, the Mill River uh, levy system will be accomplished by this contract. We had put together the plant and specs internally and, and bid this. Um, we received three bids, um, which haven't been added up for me, so I can't tell you what they are. And we're happy with the, the low bid was Northern Tree Service at $198,734. Um, the other two bids were significantly higher. Davenport Trucking, um, their base bid was $277,600. So their base bid was higher than Northern Tree's bid plus the two alternatives. Um, Northern Construction Services was the third bidder, and their base bid was $369,000. So we had quite a bit of spread wow. um, on the work. But we were happy with Northern Tree. The majority of the work associated with this is tree removal, um, doing some earthwork on the uh, minor earthwork on the levee, stump, stump grinding, uh, reestablishing sod. So um, I think the work is more in the wheelhouse of someone like Northern Tree, and I think that's probably why we get a good price. They're the ones who have the appropriate equipment to remove the trees and that sort of thing. Have you worked with Northern Tree before? Um, has the city? We have not directly, but Northern Tree did all the clearing on Route 66. <coughs> Just so you know that, I know of their work in my hometown, main clearing work. And they had worked on projects when I was in the private sector. Projects I've worked on. Oh, okay. They have a very good reputation. Okay. Chris, um, what section of the levee system is it? So is it, it, it the whole Mill no River it's system? The majority of the Mill no River system. Some of it's the diversion channel. So it's all tree work, though? The majority of it is tree work. There's some uh, concrete repair work um, to repair some swamp concrete. Um, but the majority of it is tree work and establishing saw. Mm -hmm. Gary? Same question. I'm just curious where. So we can go watch. <laughs> so this, this is to some extent mandated by the Army's letter? It is. This is the what they wanted done yeah. Yeah. six months ago, nine yeah. months ago. Exactly. We took their detailed construction report. And use that as the basis for construction permits. Okay. Um, we're addressing the majority of the maintenance things on the middle of the levy with this. Um, we had sent the plans and specs along to the Army Corps just so that they were aware of, of uh, what we wanted. And what's the source of this money? This was an appropriation from City Council, I believe, four or five years ago. They set aside $350,000 to examine the William Street Brook and fairground drainage, and then anything else we had came along. What we did was we asked for a reallocation or reappropriation of this money dedicated to this particular project. All in favor of approving this contract to uh, Northern Tree? Aye. Uh, contract to Michael Maury? Michael Maury. Michael Maury. Maury. Uh, for forest stewardship impl implementation year two in the amount of twenty eight thousand six hundred. Move approval. Second. Second. This is a contract with our licensed forester to continue work on implementing the forest uh, stewardship plans that were developed for the Lion, West Waverly Reservoirs, and the Mount Street Reservoirs. Um, the scope of work involves um, there's, a, there's a couple of different tasks here, five, five different tasks. One of them is. Um, implementing uh, timber harvesting on uh, three stands in the Ryan West Street complex and uh, stand three in the Mountain Street Reservoir complex and the former Martin uh, and Benny Lost that were recently purchased. Um, the harvest area uh, comprises about 150 acres. Um, the estimated sale of the forest products is expected to bring in uh, 
about $24,000. Uh, $24,000? $24,000. Uh, there's another task uh, for assistance with um, forestry consulting and outreach and monitoring related, relating to implementation of the forestry <coughs> Task three is um, assisting the city <coughs> in mechanical control of, um, of grapevines in interfering vegetation in the watershed. <coughs> a problem in a number of stands um, in the watershed with, with grapevines growing. They strangle the trees and they, um, they, get, uh, they grow to the point where they're in the overstory and they um, damage some of the um, mature trees that we have in the watershed. So the idea is to, is to control those vines to the <coughs> and this task can help us do that in terms of uh, preparing a spec that we could bid to get a contract out there to help us uh, control that vegetation. The last two tasks, are, <coughs> one is related to um, boundary locating and marketing, which is required um, under the uh, forest planning plan um, state requirement to locate the boundaries. And um, the last task is to do um, some uh, flush cutting of understory um, vegetation in some of in two of the stands in the watershed. Um, and actually it's one more task. Task six is preparing four stewardship plans for the properties that the city recently bought in the wider than So um, the contract value is twenty eight thousand six hundred eleven um, the Paul Sanford has secured a grant from DCR in the amount of $15,000 to cover the uh, vast majority of this work. And as I mentioned, uh, 24000 in revenue from the sale of forest products will be, right. will be achieved through this. So um, the work in total in this would generate somewhere in the order of $10,000 or $11,000. Great. Okay. Any questions? Comments? Um, Paul, thank you. Change order number one to contract 295-13 for water main improvements to Tata and Howard, in the amount of 3200 Move second. Tate and Howard is uh, assisting, uh, assisting us with the um, installation of well, uh, the design of a, uh, a water uh, a crossing of the Mill River down by 221 Pine Street, the Arts Industry Building. Mm -hmm. um, currently, we have a 16-inch water main that lies in the bed of the river, and we'd like to hang it from the bridge by the arts industry building. So they have started, and we have a contract with them to do that design. And they did a, a series of structural calculations to, to see if we could hang an insulated pipe from that bridge. And we ran into some problems with the results of the structural analysis that was done in terms of um, their, their conclusion based on their calculations was that the bridge could support uh, the bridge. What? The bridge could not support uh, a water main to be hung from that mm -hmm. bridge. So we're incurring some additional costs associated with trying to resolve that issue. We had a meeting with MassDOT structural people, um, and MassDOT had suggested um, some additional ways to revise beam calculations that might result in a more favorable conclusion related to the project. So uh, this amendment for thirty-two hundred dollars was associated with. Additional structural calculations needed on this uh, bridge crossing, and for having uh, a couple of names with mass start to talk about the water. Do you want to raise the pipe because there's a problem in going through the riverbed? Or? There is a risk; it's lying on the riverbed, so yeah, trees floating it. down river and things can get caught on there. And, um, it's pretty much bad practice to have a main transmission line. Isn't it like six feet? There, you can see it, as I recall. The water? Yeah, and under, you know, low the pipe. It is. Yeah, well, the pipe is on yeah, six feet underwater. Right, you can see it, is what I'm saying. Yes. You can see it. You can definitely see it. I try not to look across. I walk over there a lot. Uh, I'm always like this. Yes. <laughs> no risk that. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, all right, so all in favor of approving that change order? Aye. 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 Uh, next, uh, change order number one to contract 175-12 to view works for DPW database, database maintenance in the amount of $5,000. Move approval. Second. Second. 
This is a annual contract that we have for them. Uh, it's being split between the enterprise funds and the general fund uh, for it. It is covering um, our work order system in the city. So it's just an annual maintenance contract that we'll see on a year to year basis going forward. All in favor of approving this change order? So the, the change is, what, adding a year to the contract? Or? That's annual technical support and maintenance. It's a, it's a subscription program is what ViewWorks is. And the period coverage is from October 1st, 2013 to 9-30-2014. And has a number of modules with it, which is the core module, the work order module, the condition module, the risk module, the resource manager module, and service calls. Um, like I said, this is a in your contract, we've been doing it for a few years. Okay. We had some money left on the contract, and so they billed us, and um, we just didn't have enough to pay the whole bill. Mm -hmm. So rather than do a new contract, um, Joe Cook thought we could do a change order for Got it. the next year. Okay. So all in favor of approving this change order to the contract with new work? Aye. 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 Uh, next for your approval, the minutes of the July 20th BPW hearing. That would be the Saturday. Yeah. That one I gave you last time, but um, we didn't have a quorum to vote on those minutes right. at the last meeting, and I forgot to put them on here. <coughs> that was for four years Saturday. Um, Move approval. Second. Comments? All in favor of approving those minutes? Aye. Aye. Uh, next we have abstain. Two abstentions. A uh, request for permission to occupy Lamprown Park uh, by the Bridge Street School PTO to hold a fall picnic with students and their families. What did they serve it? Oh. On Thursday, September 12th. That's tomorrow. Yes. It is tomorrow. Oh, well, for heaven's sake, let's get it. Can we do some of this Okay. Will there be food? Will there be food? Yeah. Refrigerator? <laughs> They just came this week and asked us. So, pretty straightforward. Uh, do we have a motion? Move, Move approval. approval. Yeah, great. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Um, change order number one to contract 99 98 for Damon Road transportation improvements to Venas, Hangen, and Burstman. VHB. VHB. VHB in the amount of $17,400. Also, we want to extend the contract to December 31st. So this project has been lingering for quite a while for DPW. It started in 1998, hence the why it's got that contract number. Um, MassDOT, over the period of years, have changed their programs of what we're required to do for submittals for 25% review. And this change order is getting us to that 25% review in the public hearing associated with it. Once it gets to a 25% review, the project really moves rather quickly up to 75 and 100 percent review and then put into TIP program for funding and construction. So our goal is to hopefully see within five years that Damon Road will be under construction. That's my goal out of this. But we have to get to this public hearing first to really get the process to move. So these are recent changes that had to be done. Basically we had bicycle accommodation components that had to be done, additional sidewalk areas, right away plan set revisions due to that. And pavement testing, they were concerned about the overpass and the pavement thicknesses of the 91 interchange. And lastly, there's a thing now called a road safety audit, an RSA that's done with projects, where a team from MassDOT comes out and looks at the entire project and provides a, a report that the traffic engineer or our engineer is being used going forward as a guiding document. So these four things are, are part five things, excuse me, are all part of this seventeen thousand four hundred dollar change order. It'll be paid for chapter ninety funds. Oh, that's the rest of the chapter ninety? Just I forget. Are we going with a tunnel for the bike path? A bridge? Right now flyover? It's, right now it's an at grade crossing and it's working quite well. Yeah. What is unknown is whether or not the Exit 19 project and what variation of that's going to go forward with will dictate what happens with the rail trail. So I don't have an answer for you with that on what's going to happen there now. Maybe but, but in five or eight years, I might. A complete project in, involves getting us past the at-grade crossing. 
Right, but that project is scheduled to be with the Interchange 19 project. So they're start, stopping this project, Damon Road, starting at King Street, and it's ending somewhere around the used car dealership. It's the length of this particular project okay. at this point. So, uh, questions or comments? All in favor of approving the change order to the contract for Damon Road improvements? Aye. 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 Great. Solid waste update. Uh -huh. meeting tomorrow. <laughs> oh, no. Next week. Next meeting. Yeah, I can't do it. Yeah. So we'll look forward to more in the future. No session? Oh, yeah. Uh, and then uh, we'd like to hear about the CPA grant for Pulaski Park. Uh, I've been working diligently on another CPA grant for Pulaski Park. Um, I working closely with the mayor's office, who is the co-sponsor of the grant this time around. So it's the Board of Public Works and the mayor's office um, who are sponsoring this. Um, I received some valuable input from Mike Biden, the director of planning and sustainability. And I've been working with Spitzman Associates on getting some revisions to their proposal. Um, the grant application is due this Friday. Um, so we're on track to have that submitted. Um, when I met with the mayor recently, um, the mayor had uh, asked me to ask someone from the board to be present at the CPA committee meeting when they talk about and ask applicants questions about the grant applications. Um, so that meeting is going to be October 2nd. If someone can get a little bit closer, we can talk about that. I forget what time CPA meets. Their meetings are they're a little bit earlier. I think they might be 530, some more of the board meetings. I would need to check, but I can get the information out. So that's when the meeting of the applicants will occur if there are questions about um, some of the past process and that sort of thing, it might be helpful for the board to be there. Um, and the mayor said that he would be at that meeting as well to um, indicate that um, he feels it's a priority to try to get design of the park moving um, because he's also working with the city council on <coughs> redevelopment plans for the roundhouse lot. So getting the two projects um, sort of on the same schedule and track is important, although um, Pulaski Park clearly is important for some reasons. I'm happy to put that on my calendar, although I think I'm probably not the one who's most familiar with that project. And I know I should be there, and I, I, uh, I'll, I'm putting it on my calendar, but I'm not promising anything. So we'll hear more as far as the time and stuff. Yeah. Sweet. Um, Solid waste update. It was it came up earlier something about the landfill something. Uh, are we in the process of closing or capping right now? It's probably signed the contract. Contract's been signed. The sign. work is ongoing as we speak. Okay. Um, gas front layers down. The gas hasn't been put in. The liner installation is going to start this week. Um, I'll cap and the plastic cap installation. The liner crews are going to be there. So it's moving pretty well. When is that? When would that be done? Are we going to proceed down before it freezes? That's what we're hoping. October 15th. Oh, really? They'll be done then? They should be done. Should be done. Grass grows in November these days. Yeah, well, that's true. We have that on our side. Yeah. I'm digging the four-way stop sign at Prospect for Blue Line. <laughs> you are? Yeah. It's good. good. You're good. I'm digging the four-way stop sign at Prospect and Woodlawn. It means he thinks it's groovy. It's groovy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I think it works extremely well. Yes. It's unusual to have a four-way stop with real visibility. Mm -hmm. And I don't see a need to make a roundabout out of it. It's working so well. Yep. Oh, what's going to be a roundabout? I thought it was going to be... There's the discussion lights. of a mini roundabout. Oh, it mini. does need to warrant for a traffic signal. Yeah. This is why it also meant to warrant for a multi-way stop. Yeah. So the city council approved with the TPC, Transportation Parking Commission, a 120-day temporary period that will have this out and evaluate it for whatever permanent solution we want to offer going forward. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's a wind out of the sail. I think it's working good too. I, I'm, I'm glad you Although my wife did run it the other day. Oops! <laughs> I know she was on her cell phone. Well, I'm really glad you put the center stop sign up there. Yeah. How long yeah. is that going to stay up there? 120 days. Okay, so this will come in before winter. Before winter and the roads freeze, it will be down. So they're, they're going to pull the stop signs out and on the side and everything? Mm-hmm. Well, unless the city council passes an ordinance to make it permanent during that 120 day period. We haven't talked about it, so I don't want to talk about a school here, but as soon as you get everybody trained and pull them out of there, that's what you can ask. Is that something that the Transportation and Parking Commission should sponsor? They can sponsor that. Also, the ward council can sponsor that. Who's the ward council? Paul? Like, is it Paul or is it Murphy? Oh, I don't think it's Murphy. Is it David? Paul Spector. I think Paul Spector. Either Paul or Murphy. Massasoit is him. Because he lives on Massasoit. Yeah. So it's it's close. And everything on Woodlawn says Paul Spector. Does it? Yeah. So. Yeah, but I think that that might be the dividing line. Yeah. It might be more than one. But if we want to make it permanent, that process should start now because it's going to take two to three months to get well, through. Well, that's exactly what I was thinking of. It does seem uh, it be a, a little counterintuitive to yank it once, even, like the public doesn't know this is a test. They're just, oh, stop sign, you gotta stop. Mm-hmm. And when that goes away, that's gonna send a really weird message. Especially if we decide to put it back in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's only on Tuesdays that <laughs> that's that's right. Right. Uh, I'll yeah. send Owen Freeman Daniels an email tomorrow in regards to this conversation. Yeah. Are we meeting next yeah, week? Or the week after? I don't remember. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. But we should. Next week. Yeah, we, yeah. we should do something <laughs> next week. I haven't seen any complaints about it, or heard any complaints. I haven't seen anything from the Dutch Council about the rest of it. I mean, the first couple of days people did run it, but I just approached it. Well, I'm so used to stopping at Woodlawn and across Woodlawn Jackson all the time. And you know, it's real convenient when people stop because there's because they're speeding. Otherwise, they're going 40, 45. I mean, you just don't want to. You might make it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's folks come down from the hospital, but it usually is like going back down. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can you have a longer view of people coming mm-hmm. from back down. Yes. So we had one change. Uh, the board should be seeing less contracts to be signed this coming year. Uh, the city changed, uh, actually the state changed their procurement policy that we can go up to $10,000 on best management or best business practices rather than 5000 So basically we can go out there and solicit three quotes and enter into an agreement with a contractor for under 10000 without going to the board and the mayor for permission. Uh-huh. Last year, according to Joe Cook, the tw- it would have saved the board signing 27 contracts last year. You could go to once a month meeting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Then not to do appetizer, dinner, and dessert. Yeah, well, maybe um, overnight accommodations. <laughs> so that's the only thing I wanted to add. Well, that's pretty exciting. June. Jim turned 50 this past week. Mm-hmm. Really? And? Oh, and I turned 65. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yes. Really? Yeah. Oh, you don't look that yeah, Exactly. I have my Medicare card now. Mm-hmm. Wow. wow. And my dad turned 90. Very busy weekend. Wow. 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 Okay. Wow. Nothing. Nothing. Sorry. Wow. All right. I was going to wish Jim a happy birthday, but it's a good thing I didn't. Oh, me and I would have. <laughs> I would have uh, missed you. Sorry. I'm sorry. That's all right. I guess that's we're good. Karen, anything you want to bring up? No. Well, I do say one thing I want to say. I I hated private ways, but you were a really very functional board on this, and that's all I just want to say. And I would say not just on private ways, but generally, I feel like we're okay. But private ways is was a particularly obnoxious long term issue. Mm -hmm. And we got through it. Who knew it would be so much fun, right? It was kind of interesting. One more vote. We have one more vote. View. View. <laughs> Should we tell Dave Breckow it wasn't as bad as he thought it was when he was chair? <laughs> oh. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.